Then we have the next question. Yes. On behalf of the audience here today, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Zakunar and earlier your son Farid and the organizer for uh, bringing us this uh, enlightened uh, lecture. And I'm very happy to see you today in person. Uh, and I much uh, also believe in what you say about peace and harmony. And I think today's topic about women's rights and the universal brotherhood is very timely. Yeah, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, I just want to... There are so many things which I agree with you. And I suppose the main essence is, uh, like what you said in the beginning, you know, should we, adherence of the major faiths, uh, religion in this world, if we uh, are the learned one, that means we truly understand the essence of the original spirit of all the major religions, then we will come to a common point where, be it what terminologies you use, whether it's a God, it's Allah, it's a Dharma, or it actually, in essence, it actually meant the one and only. Right, so if we could agree with that, then uh, interfaith dialogue would actually open the way for peace and harmony, and there would not be any uh, sort of things like you know differentiation, but more of diversity in harmony. Yeah, and I think one of my um, uh, by the way, my name is Richard. I'm an executive recruiter. For me, although I'm born a Buddhist, but I study Islam, and I, if someone say I'm a Muslim, I'm very proud of it. Yeah, and if someone say I'm a good Christian, I'm proud of it as well because. Uh, my favorite verse in the Quran is uh, in Maeda, verse 48. I think it states very clearly that, you know, what is more important is the good work that we do, right? It's not so much, uh, uh, because if God has so willed, He has made us a single people, right? That's why He make us a lot of religion, right? But He just want to try us and test it in what He give us. But actually, all our ultimate goals uh, go back to God. And if there's any differences like we have today, if we refer back to the scriptures, whether it's the Quran or whether it's the Bible or whether it's the sutras in Buddhism or whether it's the Vedas, we will find that actually um, it refers to the same thing that you, you mentioned earlier. I have two questions which is related. Uh, first is regards the woman's right. I think about uh, interfaith marriage actually. Um, if from the Quran, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I think one of the words is Ma'edar uh, verse 5 where it stated that uh, lawful to you in marriage are actually the believers or the chaste women of the people of the book, right? Um, but of course, uh, that will depend on whether you take the uh, literal interpretation or you take the uh, tafsir makasidi, either usili or makasidi. If you take the literal, of course, some people would uh, actually come to the conclusions, which is actually upheld by many of the uh, majority of the uh, Muslim government today, Right, uh, states that the Muslim man is allowed to marry women of the people of the boat, but not vice versa, right? Because if literally it states only the chaste woman, it never said the chaste uh, man, right? If you look literal approach, but if you look at the Makassidi approach, which is the spirit of the law, and just now you talk about equality of the woman, and we know that uh, we have to look at the language of the day, because those days, like we mentioned, mankind. Mankind refers to both men and women. Just the same thing we mentioned chair, men. It actually can be a woman. That's why today we rather use humankind and chairperson. So, and because of the culture that day, of that time, most time is addressed to the male, but it meant the women as well. So if we were to interpret in that way, it would also suggest or meant to say that actually the women should be allowed to marry the men of the people of both. So now, the contention is, what is the definition of people of the book, right? So the, of course, a lot of um, government, including in Malaysia here, I suppose uh, they take the, quite the strict interpretation, so much so that they claim there's no such thing as a pure people of the book. But I would like to lend your confidence in the sense that we find the common, the common grounds, the commonalities, right? In the sense that uh, if it's, this is a book, I will give it to you afterwards. Right? This is a book by uh, Reza Shah Qasimi, a scholar under the Common Ground Initiative by Prince Jordan. And uh, it actually uh, contains a lot of uh, proof from the Quranic uh, verses. Uh, for example, uh, 87, uh, 19, which actually uh, conclude that uh, religion like Buddhism is also considered a people of the world. So my question is that in light of all these things and also to Brother, I've got a question, I've got a question. Okay, okay. You have posed two questions, cut it short. As the moderator said, if it's two sentences, if the question longer, then it becomes a speech. 
Okay, okay. So sorry, because your, I thought... Your I basically, thought I, should, I have understood, okay. brother. The two questions I have asked, mainly dealing with marry the people of the book, Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 5, and regarding can Buddhists be called the people of the book. Correct? Two questions. Okay, so, okay. Uh, so I let me answer. Okay, I just confirm. You want to ask one more question? No, no, no. This, I just, number, number one uh, is the women, Muslim women, uh, in light of the truth of the Quran, uh, uh, should be allowed to marry. I understood that. I got the question. No need of repeating. My okay. memory is, mashallah, very good. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. And before the question, you made a statement. I'll come and I'll have answer. Before you gave the two questions you asked, you made some statements. I'll come and that after I give the answer to it. Even that I remember. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Coming to your question that the Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 5, that lawful for you on this day is the food of the Ahle Kitab and the women of the Ahle Kitab who are chaste. So based on this, a Muslim man can marry a chaste woman from the Ahle Kitab, but why then the vice versa are not allowed? His interpretation is many a time when word is used, chair man, it includes even woman can be chair woman. When you say mankind, it means humankind. Quran in Arabic language is the same. When they say for man, many a times, most of the times it's included, but not always. But not always. For example, if I say as a doctor, that a woman gives birth to a child. It's woman, it's not man. Many a times man includes woman, but not always. Similarly, in the Arabic grammar, when you know the gist, yeah, you are nas. Nas is actually male. But when I translate, Oh, humankind, I say. So in Arabic also, it's the same. When the male is referred to, female is included, but not always. And that you come to know by the context. In this verse, it does say, lawful for you to marry a woman of the Ahle Kitab. So woman never includes man in Arabic, never. When I say woman, it never includes man. When I say man, it can include woman. Do you understand? Do you understand or not? When I say man, many a times it can include woman. But when I say woman, it can never include man. Even in English language. When I say chairwoman, can it include chairman? No. When I say chairman, can be chairperson. When I say mankind, can be humankind. When I say woman, right, does it be man's right? Does it mean? Okay. Okay, I agree. Even in English language. When I say woman, a man will never be included. When I say man, many a time women are included. Though in the woman, the man is there. W-O-M-A-N. In writing, man is included in woman, but not in meaning. <laughs> when you write W-O-M-A-N, man is included in the woman, theoretically, but not practically. The so same in Arabic, whenever the gender male is used, many a times it includes both, but never ever when female is used, man is included. Coming? Now coming to the point, what is the reason? So your logic cannot be applied here in any language. Neither English, Neither Arabic, neither Chinese also, hopefully. Okay, now coming to the logic. You have to ask me why and I'll give you the answer. The reason is, first of all, I differ with the majority of the scholars on this statement about women allowed. That we'll discuss later. I'll come to your main point why man is allowed to marry a woman in Kitab, but why not a Muslim woman allowed? The reason is that when a man marries a woman, the woman leaves the house and comes to the man's house, normally. Now, if you marry a LA Kitab, Jews and Christians, the Christian believes in all the prophets from Adam up to Jesus, peace be upon him. We tell the Christian, you believe one more, that's Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we as Muslims cannot degrade any prophet of the Christians. What we say from Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Jesus, we believe in all, peace be upon them all. We say believe in one more. So the woman who comes from the Christian family to the Muslim family, she's not hurt. She has to believe in an additional prophet. If a Jewess comes, she believes in all the prophets from Adam, peace be upon him, Moses, peace be upon him. We say believe in two more, Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them. It's easy. Now, if I take the vice versa, if a Muslim woman goes to a Christian man's home, that Christian doesn't believe in prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, though he should. According to the Bible, it does not. So when she goes to a Christian house, she will be insulted. Do you understand? I understand your point, uh, Dr. Zakir Nai. I have not, compl uh, I have not I... completed my answer yet. Okay, 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 okay. carry on. Sorry. Yeah. So here, because of that, if a Muslim woman goes, she will not be allowed to follow Islam. 
so that's the reason one way is allowed for a LA kitab woman to come is allowed but for a Muslim woman to go is not allowed I further disagree with the majority of the scholars this verse of the Quran of Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 5 says, Lawful for you, the food of the Ali Kitab, and the women of the Ali Kitab who are modest. But there's one more verse in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 221, which says that you cannot marry an idolatress until she believes. A believing woman, even if she's a born woman, is much better than an idolatress, even if she allows you. She may be a beauty queen. She may be the richest woman in the world. She may be the most beautiful woman in the world. To marry a slave woman who's a believer, who's a Muslima, is far superior to marry an idolatress, even if she allows you. And the verse continues, that do not marry an idolater until he believes. A slave man who's a Muslim, is a believer, is far superior to idolater, even if he allows you. He may be the most handsome man in the world. He may be the richest man in the world. A slave man who's a believer is far superior. This is the verse of the Quran. Now, one more verse of the Quran of Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 72 says, Lakat kafr kalu. They are doing kufr, those who say that Jesus, son of Mary, is Allah. They are doing kufr. So, one verse of the Quran says you can marry from the LA Kitab, who are modest. One verse of the Quran says you cannot marry those who do kufr, those who do shirk. Another verse of the Quran says, Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 72 73, that they are doing kufr. Those who say, Jesus, son of Mary, is Almighty God. Based on this, you cannot marry a Ahle Kitab girl who says that Jesus is God. Who can you marry? The answer is given in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 110. Kuntum khaira ummatin khrijat lin nas, ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tarhuna anil munkar. Kuntu'minuna billah. It says that, O oh, Muslim, they are the best of people evolved for mankind. Enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. And the verse continues. If the people of the book had faith, it would have been better for them. Among the Ahle Kitab, there are some who are believers, who are Mu'min. But the majority of Fasik people are transgressors. So according to me, there cannot be a contradiction in the Quran. When the Quran says you can marry women from the Ahle Kitab, one verse says you cannot marry those who do shirk, who associate partners with God. One verse says that those who say Jesus is God are doing shirk. But one verse says, there are among Ahle Kitab who are Mu'min. That means today there are certain Christians, they are called Unitarian, not Trinitarian. Majority of the Christians are Trinitarian, they believe in Triune God, which is not allowed in Quran. Don't say Trinity. This is probably better for you. Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 171. According to me, you can only marry those just girls who are Jews and Christians, who don't do shirk, who don't believe Jesus is God, and believe in one true God. Not any Mary, Sheila, anyone. So I differ with the majority, because I am a student of comparative religion. The majority of the scholars say you can marry any girl from Ahle Kitab. I say no, you can only marry that Ahle Kitab who is a Mumin. Otherwise, there will be a contradiction. So I believe only those Ahle Kitab, those girls, those women who believe in one God and don't believe Jesus is God. Based on that, I differ. And as I told you, does allow a man to marry a Ahle Kitab who believes in one God, but does not allow the vice versa, because that girl, when she goes to a Christian or a Jewish house, the Prophet Muhammad will be degraded. They don't believe in it. So how can you continue? You can't continue having a vehicle, one tire of a tractor and one of a bicycle. Coming to your question, that you posed earlier, that I'm happy to say I'm Muslim, I'm happy to say I'm a Christian. It sounds good, but for a person who has knowledge, it sounds contradictory. See, when I said, if Christian means following the teachings of Jesus Christ, I am more Christian than the Christian themselves. But normal terminology of Christian means a person who worships Christ. Correct? The normal terminology, majority of the Christians, they say that Jesus is God. So you say, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, it contradicts. The moment you say Jesus is God, you can't be a Muslim. So that's the reason when you use words. If you know what does it mean. If you say Christian means following teachings of Christ, that means you're a Muslim only. But if you say Christian means the person who worships Christ, you can never be a Muslim. You can't say, I have got 10 rupees, 
and then tomorrow you will say that I've got more than 100 rupees. I'm an arrogant spirit. I don't believe Jesus is the son of God. Correct. That means you're not like a normal Christian. Very good. Then if you say you're a Muslim, I can accept you. Very good. That's the reason when you do comparative religion, I'm very careful. When I say I'm a Hindu, geographically I'm a Hindu. At the same time I say, if you say Hindu is a person who do idol worship, I'm not a Hindu. I make it clear. I don't try and butter everyone. You understand? So same way if you say you're a Muslim. Muslim means a person who submits his will to God, who believes there's one God, who believes that God has got no image, who does not believe in idol worship, and who believes Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger. Brother, do you believe there's one God? Yes. Do you believe God has got no image? Yes. Do you believe idol worship is wrong? Yes. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger? I mean, uh, according to the Quran, it states so. Yes. So I, I, do I you believe, believe? In, that, in that same point, I believe. Allah, so if you believe yeah. that God is one, and if you believe idol worship is wrong, and if you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, then you are a Muslim. Then you qualify to be a Muslim. You can become more and more practicing later on. But if you agree with the basic, these two things are basic required for a person to enter Islam. After that, the other practices will come slowly and slowly. So if you agree there is one God, and if you say idol worship is wrong, and if you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, you are a Muslim. And then I agree with you when you said that Jesus is not God, then I surely agree with you that you can be qualified to be called a Muslim. That, that, that's what I meant when I say uh, I, agree with I, you. I want to be a good Muslim, very good, good, good very Christian. Good. When I say I, I can be a good Christian, following the I teaching, meant, the true teachings of Jesus, yes, like yes, me, like yes, me. Very yes. good. I'm with you. Even yes. I'm to be a good Christian. Yeah. What, what I meant, that, that is why I take the trouble to go into some background just to clarify that, you know, we have to uh, encourage everyone to go back Correct. to the original spirit and the truth Correct. of this. All the religious texts, Brother, would not, you... not the majority of what the followers Very good, very believe. good. If you want... majority very good, I agree with you. Think incorrectly. I agree with you. Majority yeah. is not always right. I agree with you. You have to follow the scripture, not the church. Yes. Brother, now what you said in English that I'm a Muslim, etc. Would you like to say it in Arabic? No. Would you like to say it in Arabic that there's one God and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? No. I think uh, just to borrow the words of Prof. Tariq Ramadan, he says very... Uh, Sorry? Professor Tariq Ramadan. Prof. Tariq Ramadan. Yeah, yeah. I happened to attend one of his sessions, and I think he said very correctly. He said he has no problem with Islam, but only some Muslim. He has no problem with other religious texts, no Bible or sutras or Vedas in the original form, just like you, you said, you know, right? They believe in the one or one yeah. God. But it's the, the followers, the majority of them right now. Correct. Know? Same thing. Yeah. I'm not here to defend the Muslims. Every community of black sheep, I'm here to talk about Islam. And when you want to follow Islam, don't look at the Muslim, look at the Quran. Yes, correct. But I'm asking you that once you believe there is one God, and you believe that idol worship is wrong, and you believe that Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God, this is basic to gain entry into the school. Entry into the school first standard. Then you may become second, third, fourth later on. What I'm asking you, would you like to admit yourself to the school of Islam? Uh, Dr. Zakir Knight, uh, based on verse uh, 48, uh, Ma'ida, I think uh, Allah or God has made it so clear that it's, it is not His will. You know, He said, if, if, if I had so will, I'll make you a single people, but that's not His plan. So, in other words, uh, no, Allah no, no. knows best. And no, that's all not His plan. That's not that want, that so verse of the Quran, if He wanted, He could have made everyone believe, then where is the test? If the teacher says, I, if I want, I can pass everyone, then no one will study. So Allah is telling, for him to make everyone believe is very easy. But because this is the test, as I quoted the verse of Surah Mulk, chapter 67, verse number 2, Allah di khalaq al wal hayata. It is Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good indeed. If he makes everyone believe, then where is the test? He's already created that creation, the angels. The angels always follow Almighty God. But the human beings, with giving of free will, if they follow Allah's commandment, they are superior to the angels. If after free will they disobey, then they go lower than the angels. In this aspect, I would rather interpret this passage as a differentiation between the people of the book and the Mushrikuns. That means idolaters. I haven't come to your second question yet. People of the <laughs> okay. book. Okay. Your question of people of the book, I haven't come to it yet. Yeah. That's your second question. Okay. I answered your first question and I've given comments on can what you spoke before asking the question. The people okay. of the book haven't come to it yet. Okay, can, can, I, can I just uh, uh, sum up on two common points that we share in common? 
Number one, I think you, you agree uh, that uh, most of the time, if not all the time, when Quran or any other text that we see, you know, in those uh, culture, language culture, they, even today, you know, when they talk about the men, it will also include the women. Right? But that answer I gave you now, brother. Yeah. Again, you're coming back to the same question. Did you forget no, my no, answer? No, 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 no. I agree. I just want to confirm. But when you say woman, the man is not included. I mean, uh, um, allow me to, to go a little bit further. I have uh, not answered your second question. You're asking me a third question. Because the... The, the moderator first... told one question at a time. First, you gave a speech which I had to comment on. Then you asked first question. Then you asked second question. I have not answered the second question. You're asking me third question. Uh, that is okay. Please Brother, don't, I would love don't, to, get, I would, don't get me wrong. I'm not what, getting you wrong. I'm getting question, you right. But the moderator said one question at a time. Go yeah. behind the queue. I will answer your second question. I would love to answer. I'll be here. Even if everyone goes, I'll be here. I promise you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank but you let so me much. answer your second question. You can but, go behind the other non-Muslim. I will be but, here. I will not leave. But the first question, uh, can I... I yet have to answer the second question of yours. Oh, but... So uh, don't you want the answer for that? Oh. Are the Buddhist L.A. Kitab... I have not answered that. Did you get the answer? Did I okay. answer? Uh, okay. Um, okay. I can understand your standpoint. I have not yet given the answer. How can you understand? Can you read my mind? Great, you are. I have Sorry, not Dr. Zakir Nai. I have not started my answer on LA Kitab. Dr. Zakir Nai. That is, I'm referring to the first uh, answer that you gave to my first question. So you have spoken. So I think I know what you said because all the audience know what you said. So, so of the first answer, second answer, where have I given? Uh, because the first answer, I beg to defer in certain areas. So can you allow me to, to, to give my viewpoints? I mean, to be, uh, yeah, at, two at the end of the queue. I love at the end of the queue. I'll give the second answer, then go behind the queue. I would love. But then there are about 7, 8,000, 10,000 people here. 4,000 in the auditorium, 6,000 outside. So you can go behind the queue. I'll just give the answer to your second question. The second question you posed that can we consider the Buddhist to be LA Kitab? LA Kitab in Arabic means people of the book. Kitab means book. Kitab also means revelation. It can be people of the revelation. In that way, even we have a book. Even the Muslims are Ali Kitab. But the terminology used in the Quran, Ali Kitab specifically refers to Jews and Christians and no one else. Ali Kitab is a word meaning people of the book, but in context of the Quran, it only refers to Jews and Christians. We have many prophets, but when the Quran says, O oh Prophet, tell your wives and the believing woman, it means only one Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So if you know the language, you can understand that when the Quran says, O oh Prophet, do this, it is only referring to the last and final Prophet Muhammad and not the earlier prophets. Similarly, LA Kitab means people of the book, even Muslims are people of the book. In, in definition. But when Quran says Ali Kitab, it does not refer to Muslims. It only refers to Jews and Christians. So at the time of the Prophet, this idiom, Ali Kitab, was only used for Jews and Christians, no one else. There are many other people who have got revelation. There are many other religions which have got book. But in the Quran, it refers to only Jews and Christians, no one else. It's very clear cut. If you know, if you it depends, know, Zakir, right? because if you read the commentary by uh, our learned Prof. Hashim Kamali, forget about commentary. I'm talking about the text. I'm talking depends, about the text. You're it talking depends about on how commentary. you interpret. It depends how you interpret. Whether you interpret it using the, the literal or using the I'm Makassi. giving the interpretation of the Quran. If you say, "Yeah, Ali Kitab, come to comment term," that means all Muslim come to comment term. What does it mean? If I say you can marry a woman from the Ali Kitab, Ali Kitab are Muslims also. So that means you cannot marry a man from Ali Kitab. Man is Muslim also. So that's the reason. If I use your logic, there'll be contradiction in the Quran. So that which is. commentary you're following, I don't know. The commentary should match with the text of the Quran. If the commentary doesn't match with the text of the Quran and gives you a different meaning, you reject that commentary. This is my answer for the next question. You can go behind the queue. Okay, before I, before I go, just the last... Please go behind the queue, please. Please go behind the queue. I will inshallah answer. I will stay here. As long as you stay, I will stay here. Okay, I'll okay. stay till morning also. Till morning. Okay, we have a private session after that. Not okay. private, stand behind the queue. Can we have the next question? Thank you.